Hello, and welcome to The Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, The Word of God, and how to incorporate it in our daily lives. We're in November. Oh my gosh, it is already November. Yep. All Saints Day, All Souls Day have passed, and the first weekend in November. Solemnity. Um, yes. Not for all of you. Not for all of you. <laughs> and even not really for us. Let's say how this works. <laughs> so on November 4th, uh, we celebrate the feast of St. Charles Borromeo. Correct. That's his regular feast day. That was three days ago. It was. Or whenever you're watching three days this, before it Sunday. yesterday. Three Who days knows? before that Sunday. Exactly. So what one is able to do is you can transfer the celebration of the feast to the nearest Sunday or to another day so that more of the faithful can partake in that celebration. Catholics like to celebrate. We do. So that's what we have decided to do. Uh, we have moved the solemn celebration of St. Charles Feast Day, transferred it to this coming Sunday. So we are not going to do the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time at St. Charles. We're going to observe the Feast of St. Charles Borromeo, and we're going to celebrate that in place of the Sunday in Ordinary Time. Excellent. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you're somewhere else and listening to other readings, you can just reflect with us on Ezekiel. Yes. What's God doing in Ezekiel, Jonathan? Well, the, the kings of that time weren't doing a very good job. Yeah, none of the leaders. None were. of the leaders I mean, were doing a good job. Have they ever? Are they still? I mean, let's. But Ezekiel, the prophet, has come to say that God is going to come and shepherd his people. He's going to take care of his people, and he's going to take care of the bad rulers as well. Absolutely. So there's this whole notion that the, the, the people of Israel, those who have put their faith in God, they have been left to, to wander, yeah. really. I mean, those who were supposed to be shepherding, those who are supposed to be ruling and guiding and governing, they're not pulling their weight. They're not doing a good job. In many ways, they're feeding off of the people. They are. You know, using, using the lowly uh, for their own benefit, I guess. And uh, this is the prophet saying, Whoa, God is going to shepherd his people, and he's going to shepherd them rightly. Correct. And so there's really, I think, some messianic imagery in there that mm -hmm. he's going to come and, and heal the sick and he's going to bind up the broken. You know, it's all of the things that you would expect, the wandering he's going to find. And then there's this interesting line the way it all ends. Yes. The sleek and the strong, he will utterly destroy shepherding them rightly. So it's a little bit of it's a little bit of a, a terrifying word, and I, I think it just goes to show that you know it's what Jesus always says: the the healthy don't need the doctor, the sick do. Right. That God is if if you have not taken care of the people and you have gotten yourself fat and you've made to the yourself, slaughter exactly, <laughs> He's going to destroy them. That that's not what you were supposed to do. You misused the resources I gave you. So it, it really is the, it's the good shepherd monologue, prelude, whatever, in the Old Testament. Yeah. Which then makes the psalm make a whole lot of sense. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. That Psalm 23, we all know it. We know it well. That God is going to be the shepherd. And in God, then, I don't need anything else. He's everything. He's going to... Lead me to the brooks, to the streams. To He's going to lay that banquet for me. He's going to, with his rod and his staff, he's going to defend me. So it really is It's a hopeful psalm. It's the, one of those psalms that are often done at funerals. Yes. Because I think we're just looking for that, I need something bigger than me. Yeah. I, I, I got to know that there's someone taking care of things. Right. So it definitely responds to that first yeah. reading. Where we're lacking, he's going to fill us and more. Absolutely. Our second reading from the New Testament now Romans. is going to come from St. Paul to the Romans. Yes. And what's he talking about, Jonathan? He's really just trying to keep his people in check. <laughs> I think that's what all of those apostles and prophets were supposed to be doing. Let's go, people. 
But yeah, don't don't think too highly of yourself. Don't you know really be the true word, sense of the word of the humility and be humble. Right. Of being able to see yourself as you are, and then be of use in your gifts and talents. It really and that's I think it's it's don't don't puff yourself up. Don't be like those old rulers that right. you know we might rem- remember. Uh, but but recognize what gifts you do have, and then take those gifts and use them for the good of others. So if you're a teacher, then teach. Right. If you're a persuader, then exhort. If you are wealthy, then give with generosity. Whatever you, whatever gift you have, don't use it for yourself, but use it for others. And that was really what God was chiding the, the, the leaders of old about. Right. You had these gifts, you didn't use them. You just fattened yourself up. And St. Paul is saying, we don't want to do that. We want to use our gifts for the glory of God. Amen. Which takes us into the gospel. So we're because it's a solemnity for St. Charles, we're not following the regular trek of readings uh, through Mark's gospel. Nope. We're going to pull one from St. John's gospel for this weekend. Excellent. And Jonathan, what do we hear the Lord saying? It's the good shepherd. What else? Well, if you've been paying attention so far, you know that it's got to be fulfilled. Ezekiel prophesied the coming of the Good Shepherd. Yes. And Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. Correct. And he tells us all the things that a Good Shepherd does. Right. He defends the flock. He's not like a hired man who works for pay. No. Um, The wolf is coming. He will defend. He defends. Uh, he knows them and his sheep know him. And I think that's the important part because it's, it's that the, here is the comfort that really that Psalm 23 was looking for. Right. We've got to know that we are being protected, that we are being cared for, all of these things. And it's a, a, a protector that's close. You know, the sheep, the only way they know the shepherd is because he's in them, with them, around them. Smells like the flock. Where have we heard that before, Holy Father? Right. It's not like the kings of old where it's... Far away. You know, if they got a glimpse of them, that might be about the closest they get to them. Absolutely. So it really, it really is the, the, the God who is so close to us that he is in there with us and he is protecting us and walking with us. And so, you know, all of these readings, very shepherding, very much uh, depending on God as our protector... They really remind us that no matter where we're at, that we we have to know that the shepherd is near to us and he's concerned for us. Even our stained glass is the good shepherd. That will be perfect. A perfect image and icon for this weekend as we have these readings. And they fit the reason, like as you've been listening to this and say, okay, well, why these readings for the Feast of St. Charles? Because St. Charles uh, was the bishop in Milan uh, during uh, uh, a whole lot of t- tumultuous times. Right. I mean, we're, we're post-Protestant Reformation now, so the church has just experienced an earthquake and tremors and schisms. Uh, there, there's plague that is uh, breaking out everywhere. And, and Charles really, he was a reformer. Right. He was a man of the church. He was a man of God. You know, he was not a man of the world. He wasn't trying to fatten himself, even though he w- was from a wealthy family and a powerful political family in the church and in the world and all of these things that Charles shows us what a good shepherd is. Right. And how he would sacrifice himself for his people. He would, yeah. And it's, I think it's, he is a perfect model of that good shepherd, other than Jesus being the perfect model. Exactly. But how is that incarnated now in different in different ways, shapes, and forms? And so yeah. I think it gives us all something to think of that not only is God our shepherd, but then how do I take that, live that, and be that for someone else? I think that's ultimately where each of us can reflect and, and give thanks not only to God, but then to those others in our lives, and then to ask ourselves, well, how am I doing that for someone else? That's our responsibility. That's been bestowed upon us, and we don't want to fatten ourselves up. Nope. The Lord Jesus concludes (laughs) that there is to be one fold. There is one shepherd, and that's where we're all aiming. So that's what we work to build.
All right. Amen. We're going to celebrate the Feast of St. Charles this weekend. If you don't happen to be with us, you're going to celebrate something else. Uh, but we're all going to be celebrating the love that God has for us. Amen. We'll see you later.